and I'll tell you guys since we're since we're all friends. Every character I write has a piece of me in them. Hi, I'm Lee Bardugo. You're listening to the Grisha Cast. Welcome to Grisha Cast, episode 81. In this episode, we will be discussing chapters 8 and 9 from the book Rule of Wolves. This is your host, Eric. And I'm Terry. From Nashville, Tennessee, this is your podcast for all things Grishaverse. A world created by my best friend's doppelganger, <laughs> Lee Bardugo. <laughs> Woo! Moi Savienyi casters! Hello, hello! So, we got some listener cities we are going to start off with. We do. First, we have Purai, Malaysia. Wow. Yeah. And then we're moving to Riverview, Florida. Oh. Thank you guys out there. Thank you. It means a lot. It really does. So much. So, for those of you that want to support our podcast a little more and reap the rewards, we now have Patreon. Yay! And for a hot <laughs> summer special, we are offering $2. Just $2. $2? On, for a month. You're crazy. That's it. $2 a month for access to all of our extra content called Grisha Cast After, where we talk a little about the Grishaverse and a lot about being best friends. There are also tiers that grant you a co producer and even a co host status. Check us out at patreon.com forward slash Grisha Cast or follow the link at GrishaCast.com. Do. Do it. We got a lot of stuff coming for you anyway. So Come I mean, in. For ya. Yeah, we are working hard on our new website, which has, once we get that out, it's going to be so easy because we've got so much stuff on there. Um, we're going to have quizzes that we've come up with that are going to be really cool because they act, they're going to work and they're going to be neat and they're going to be at, like, just letting you know we're working hard and putting all that stuff together and we're coming out with some merch. Oh, my God. I know. I thought that was really kind of weird. <laughs> so much stuff in your face. I know. I was actually surprised because I asked some of our listeners what they would and would not buy because that I just and I was very shocked by some of the answers because like I'm not a logo person. Like I don't like to buy things with logos on them. Okay. So like. For instance, like, I mean, like, even though like I lo- if I was a listener of Grisha Cast, like I, I for some reason, like I don't like buying logos of like TV shows or any of that stuff. I'm just not one of those people. I'm I, not like I'm not a T-shirt purchaser. Like I, I don't do like the the band tees right. and the, everything else. But like a pin, yes, or like something like that. Yes, I'm all about it. Like something that I can like stick a little thing somewhere and um or like even socks. I know it sounds ridiculous, but I have like a pair of K Flay socks that I love. Um, I just don't like. A lot of the problem is the way the shirts fit because they're always the unisex. Yes, you've said things. that before. Yes, so mm-hmm. I refuse. Um, and then just to like, just a you know, a white shirt with like a big someone else's. I don't know. Yeah. So one thing that I love is always things that specifically have to do with me within like fandoms. Like, for instance, like I mean, I love things that have to say that show that I'm an ethereal Kai right. or a squalor. Like, love, love, love that stuff. Um, so we have, we've got some of that stuff being created, which is going to be really cool. Um, it's neat. So we're going to have pins and things. And I think I've posted on our Instagram. We, I, we did create some stickers and buttons just for a trial. And the ism rude was really cute, which by the way, I have to give you. Yes, you do. It is so funny. I don't know if like, did you even (laughs) see it? Um, no, I have not. Oh, you sent me a picture of it. Yes, yeah. I saw that there's one. There's Ism Rude. And, there's and then one. there's our logo. Yeah, they had this company had a good little sale going on. So I was like, you know what? I'll try it out. So Yo. out. Anyways, enough about us. Um, Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> well. Never. One thing we can't forget is that we did announce last week. Aiden Thomas. We will be having Aiden Thomas on the show, which is really exciting. Yes. Um, Aiden Thomas. Um, I actually just finished watching the interview with when Lee interviewed him when Cemetery Boys came out, and it was so good. It was actually like on Halloween or like right next to it. Oh, so like they both had like Halloween costumes on. And um, have and you that been? That fits the tone of the book. I was going to ask you. So what do you think about it so far? Like I 
love it. I think it's, it's good. like it's so different. Uh huh. Um, it being uh the main character being the way you know that they it, that they are going things are going through. Um, it being like a Hispanic background. Yep. Uh, yeah, it's it's incredible. It is. I just think it's a groundbreaking book, and then to it's also- important. And it's a In YA a book. Yes. Like, how amazing is that? That, I mean, young adult, that's a young adult book. We mm-hmm. had nothing like that no. when we were growing up. <laughs> Woo, no. Like, not at all. And I just love that it's in the fantasy genre, too. Yes. And, but it's just because that's where a lot of us go to when we're not accepted from other people. We slip into yep. um, the fantasy world um, because it's a magical world where anything is possible. Exactly. So I think it's important for that space to be open to everyone. Agreed. And Cemetery Boys is incredible. And Lee gave us the tip on it and Mm -hmm. told us to read it. And I did. And I was absolutely blown away by it. Um, It it really is an amazing story and just groundbreaking. Really, Mm -hmm. like I'm not even joking. I know there's we I can say that about a lot of books, but this really is a groundbreaking book because there's nothing else out there like it. I promise you. Um, and it's it's an easy read too. Oh yeah, that's what I liked about Mm -hmm. it too. So, so yeah, we've got Aiden coming, and that will be towards the end of the month. Um, and I said I would have a deadline for you this um podcast, and oops. So um, let me kind (laughs) of look real quickly at um. The calendar. <laughs> so while I'm doing that, what happened do, to you? Do, how are you? Do, how are do. you doing? Is, <laughs> is everything going on? On okay? Okay, over there. The, uh, oh, eh, 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 yeah. No. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I How's mean, COVID? And like, cause so I missed you last week. I know we got to yes, talk, but like, I'm fine. You are. Yes. Good. Yep. I'm good. But I tested negative twice. So. <sighs> Twice and like you had to get tested twice since we've. I was just I did it once, and then um, I was feeling a little wonky. And with my boss, I work with him so closely that it was like freaking me out. So I did it again. Just, I mean, it's free, and yeah. <laughs> just to make sure because literally everyone at work has it, <laughs> and I don't want students coming in, and I don't want to like potentially get somebody sick. So I wanted right. to like be. 100 percent sure um but i started feeling better i think it was allergies my doctor gave me like some crazy i don't know benadryl feeling stuff that makes me loopy in the head and it helped so i think it was really just allergies because yeah nashville well and smoke in the air from the wildfire so it was just a perfect storm well i'm glad you're better i'm glad you don't have covid again um I actually went and got tested too, um, which it's amazing now they do these rapid tests. Um, I just, which took 10 minutes for them to tell me I was negative, but like, it's just, I, um, I wasn't feeling good at the beginning of this week and I, um, it's just kind of like, it's going around again and it makes me really nervous, um, just because I, I don't see a lot of people wearing masks and I am. I, I'm back at wearing one at work, and they're not making me either. They ha- But I feel like that's coming. I think that yeah. is on them. I know that you have to. Yes, we do. You do. So we have not yet, but I feel like that's coming. If people don't start doing what they need to do, because here's one problem that I've realized. Learn about what the vaccine is. Like, one, the vaccine does not mean that you cannot get covid it does not clear you from it and mean you can just walk around and be okay. It just makes it, you can get it. It just won't be as harsh. Um, is that yeah. the correct way of putting right. it? Because yeah. I just know that I talked to my mom it and dad. Help, it helps you fight. Fight it, against yes. it better. My mom and dad thought that you could just like, I mean, you were, you couldn't get it. Mm. And I mean, you could not tell that woman no until finally she, Lord, it was on her news station, so now she believes it. But <laughs> I love your mother. My God. Just, I mean, if nothing else, for just pure entertainment. Yeah, if I ever need to tell my mother anything, I just need to like, I need to talk to CNN and just like have them please like, can you do a commercial and tell my mother that um, my birthday's coming up and this is what I'd like. Yeah. Or you could probably, or you could tell her that the gays are into it because. Oh my she's, God! Yeah, yeah. share. 
Cher says uh-huh. that I really want those new socks. Yes. And she is all about it. Yep. So please. But she said, you don't love your gay son unless you buy these socks. <laughs> yep. Yep. You, it, yeah. I, I won't feel she any would, of the love you love. She it, would cry until she bought those socks. And then my house would be full of like 10,000 yes. pairs of socks. Yes. Um, I love my mother. She is so yes. sweet. Yes. We are She's going, very sweet. But we are going through some tough times with my family. I, lo- I mean, in a, it's just, it's hard. My mom and dad are getting older. And that is very, very hard for me. It's very hard for us. Um, just, um, yeah. Whew. It's a, it's a whirlwind, I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I feel like the last couple of weeks, it's been crazy. Um, luckily, both my parents are vaccinated. But, like, I just, it's sad because, like, and I'm going to share this just because I will. Like, my dad, unfor- like, he's so laid back. But, like, he hasn't gone to work in a long time. And he stopped pretty much going to work. And he had the surgery on his eye. And, like, they had to, he no longer can drive. Like, um, he has cataracts. And, like, hearing him tell me that, like, I can't drive anymore. And, like, we have to sell the car. Like, he he was trying to, like, I could just tell that, like, he it was he was being mature about it Mm -hmm. but you it's it's hard it's it's hard to see that right and it's interesting also to see someone deal with like that's a hard thing to all of a sudden watch to be able to do everything raise a family you know and then all of a sudden start having things change and just you not be able to do the things you used to do and i just um i'm so i love my dad i'm so proud of him he's he's great um i love my mom too they just um both are on Whew. They're fun people, though. They, they are. are. Yeah, everybody that meets them loves them. They are <laughs> hilarious. They are. They needed their own show a long time ago. Yeah. My dad can't hear anything that, because he li- literally can't hear. Mm-hmm. He doesn't know how to use his hearing aids. My mom, then, like, my dad will be talking, and she'll be mad because she was trying to say something and he couldn't hear her because he can't like, hear. Like, yeah. <laughs> so instead... Instead of her just letting him talk and then politely speaking afterward, she she starts yelling at or at a very loud in a very loud voice what she wants to say at the exact same time my dad's talking. Um, so it's like this battle going on. You can be in between them. My dad literally has no clue that any of this is going on. My mom does, and she's just trying to win. <laughs> yes. So like she's just like, but you can't take it all in. Um, Whew. <laughs> love my family, but I mean, Southern Jewish families, bless you. I love you all, but oy vey's me. <laughs> Goodness. You said it all. I right did. There. Yeah. Okay. That's so that's the important part. I didn't know this was going to take such a turn into like <laughs> Judaism, <laughs> but <laughs> there we go. Well, we love you guys. Hope you guys are doing well. But point of all that was stay safe. Do what you need to do. Yes, stay safe. Yeah, do what you feel is right to stay safe and not get sick. And I am, yeah, really. Everybody needs to watch out for one another. Um, And August 21st, it's a Saturday, is the cutoff day for the any questions you have for Aiden Thomas. So Aiden has two books out right now. um, And they both are fantastic. But... Any questions whatsoever, questions about the Grishaverse, questions about Aiden's books, questions about Aiden himself is, I'm sure he, he will be fine answering any of it. It's, um, he's cool like Lee, so it's just going to be one of those fun conversations, you know? Yeah. It's going to be easy. It's going to be a chat with a friend. It will be. So, of course, we've now wasted about 15 minutes just talking about nothing about the Grishaverse, so <laughs> we should probably get into our <laughs> podcast. Oh, I guess so. I mean, yeah. So I guess that's what everybody wants to hear. Yeah. So what we got going on up in chapter eight? So, so in chapter eight, you're so many So, um, we go to Nikolai. This is the first chapter I'm doing in a long time. That's not Nina. <laughs> I know. This is the first because we. I usually like always hog the Zoya yeah. story, but this time. You had to take part of it. I did. I had to had to switch over to the other side here. <laughs> so, 
Luckily, the battle is subsided and like the dust is settled, and Nikolai is on his way back to Os Alta. That's right. The antidote has settled literally. Yes, literally the un- dust from the antidote is literally settled. Um, so they're, they're stopped, and the, I have this quote in here because we're, I mean, let's just face it, like, we want the ship of, oh. like, like any, any ship in this okay. creature-verse, like, we want the ship. So um, I have this cute little quote <laughs> that it's what we all want. Nikolai was dictating a reply to General Raevsky and trying to ignore the noise of Tolia and Tamar sparring outside the stables when he sensed her. What they endured on the fold had connected them in some way, and he knew he would see Zoya when he turned, yet the sight of her struck like a sudden change in the weather. A drop in temperature, the crackle of electricity in the air, the feeling of a storm coming on. The wind lifted her black hair, the blue silk of her kefta whipping around her frame. End quote. Yes. So that's that's what we want. We want that juice. We want that sauce. Yes. <laughs> I, I I've got it in my notes. I like literally like you and I are like both like I'm like I want this ship and I have yes. like quotes about it too cuz it's it's so good in this book. It is. Like it's written really well. So and, great. Oh. Yeah, battles are great. But like we want Zoya the juice. Zoya and Nikolai like and I love <laughs> I just love the way he looks at her and thinks about her yes it's it's also this point where he's like she's wearing that damn blue ribbon again mm. <laughs> he wants ribbon. to like take it out out of her hair i know yep. so saucy uh, but we have to remember that the wedding is about to happen the wedding to airy princess yeah, airy so you would think that- so like what in the hell is he gonna do <laughs> he's clearly in love with zoya clearly but hasn't said it. But hasn't admitted it. Probably even himself. I don't think we've even had Zoya even. Have we had hints? I We know we've had hints of Nikolai definitely I think, towards Zoya. But I feel like they're very small for Zoya. It's, yes, She's, it's very small. It's the stuff they went to get, you know, together on the fold. It's the, the caring of him and like not wanting yeah. to see him go through everything. And so like they, they clearly... Cl- <laughs> see, I'm so excited about they're it. They're a match. They, <laughs> they clearly care for each other very much Mm -hmm. but the positions that they're in they can't like a king and his general is it's complicated if only alina knew what she did to these poor people by like (laughs) i know because she made made sure that nikolai was king and then she put she put together the triumvirate and i mean yeah but at that time zoya like was just still kind of, I'm sure, hating Nikolai at that point. I'm not really sure. I think she probably was starting to l- tolerate him, but I don't think. She- yeah. If you think about the end of Ruin and Rising, I'm sure she wasn't like. She was a different person. I know. Yeah. Her. Yeah. Her glow up. You don't need me to go on about her because you know I can. Because <laughs> we will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's for later. So, okay. They're back on the road. They reach Oz Alta. Um, so. On the way, they're talking about how Kirch is going to be mad at them uh, because they only gave them the plans for the water right, and not the air. Half the plan. Yes. But. <laughs> so, but, I mean, you have to go where the alliances are the strongest. And he his argument, too, is we, you don't want them to be greedy. You don't want them to have everything kurt wasn't gonna help them right kurt was being pretty much well, like Kurt only goes where the money is regardless. exactly and like they were asking for help and like kurt was like no nope, we're yeah. not gonna do any of that and then like i don't know and he thinks that they're gonna end up backing vedic anyway um uh. and we and we don't even know at this point if vedic is actually a off. Or not? Oh no! It's still another pretender that, like, I mean, we should make a list because, as Nikolai reminds us in this part, all the Lansoff line was killed at his birthday party. Yeah, there's like no one else in that line. The Dark One killed all of them. <laughs> yep. So, um, for this to be a Lansoff, it would have to come from somewhere else. Exactly. And he does remember the household that this Vedic character came from. So we know that at least he didn't show up out of nowhere. Like, we know that he has been a part of 
Nikolai's history. There is something. Some yeah, yes. it's not just somebody like crazy pants who like just comes up with stuff. right. Like I think she did. Like I think she just was like crazy in her head and just was like, I woke up one day and was like, that's right. I'm well, a- I mean. With his, the way that his parents... I mean, yeah, we don't know the history, but... I we mean, know his parents got around. But her hair... Like, I mean, I just feel like the Lansov, they're definitely described as having, like, blonde hair. You know? Like, I mean, I feel like that's a trend that very much is, like... And yeah. Crazy Pants didn't have blonde hair, right? So, no, she had red hair. See? So, speaking of blonde hair, that mm-hmm. makes us think of Fjordans. Yeah. So, with the history behind... Nikolai is that his mother was a Fjordan princess. Nikolai's and, mother. Yes. And she claims that Nikolai's real father is a Fjordan shipping magnate named Magnus Opjer, which is a fun name. We heard about this in the last book, right? Or yes, am I just but re- like a teeny bit about it, but we got it. Yeah. Okay. I'm just I'm trying. I'm trying to make sure I'm not crazy. I, I can't remember whether I it's like when I read this book or when I read. <laughs> I know like, it all blends together. Blends okay, together, which is like about this. which is kind of the problem with reading forward because then you're like, is it yes. from the future or the because past? she told Zoya um, and there's like a picture. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So um, this Magnus Opter. I can't just say his first name because it's Magnus Opter. It's yeah, it's Lee, fun. I wish so, you would have made easier names. <laughs> So apparently he has given Fierda the uh, Nikolai's mother's love letters to him, providing that they were actually a thing. So there's proof that they at least loved each other. Uh, <laughs> Still, I'm sorry, but that ain't proof. I mean, I yeah, great. No. Glad you had a relationship, but I mean. I mean, I guess unless it says some juicy details in there, like when they met behind the fishing hut. I don't know. Fishing hut. It's Fierda and <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It sounds very I, romantic. Mm. And stinky. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so when they get to the palace, uh, instead of everything calming down, there's a shooting. <laughs> of course. And everybody's on guard again. Um, and then Ari and Tin Tavgard come in saying, sorry, right. we're going home. That's right. Because they're walking up to the palace. And this happens out. Like, he actually gets, Nikolai actually gets into the palace and they close the doors and, and he kind of takes a breath of like, oh, I'm home. And then bam, bam. shooting. Yeah. This, this, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting excited because this like freaked me out. Um, so he's trying to like talk to them and like trying to figure out like um, what's happening. Right. And he starts feeling a little like something's weird i don't know what's happening and he realizes like in a split second that their clothes are soaked in an accelerant you know like a gasoline type thing and they just go up in flames (laughs) they just burst into flames they're flaming and he tries to save airy he goes to like grab her and gets burned on his arms um but she is just badly burned she is really bad off and he has to call for the healers and you know, in that moment, you think, you know, what's going on? Right. Um, he says that Ari had no idea what was going on. He could see it, like, in her face right. that she didn't know. Um, so when Zoya asks, you know, why? Why in the world would this happen? Tamar replies that the top guard served the queen until death, and Ari is no queen. So mm-hmm. we can get from that that the queen has ordered this to happen because if they will only do what the queen says and Ari didn't know what was going on, then you put two and two together that the queen wanted or- Ari dead. Well, and she ordered in the last book, I mean, obviously convinced Ari to go and yep. commit suicide and kill supposedly Nikolai. Yep. Yeah. So this queen is bad news. Yeah. Queen Maki. Yep. Yeah. Makai. I heard it Makai. Makai. I, I, I don't know which way I'm going to go. I'm probably going to say it different ways. But I was listening to the audiobook, and I think they say Makai in the audiobook. But I'm going to probably say Maki for some uh, reason. Cause it you reminds... say whatever you want. I will. No. Good. It's your turn. Oh, is that where it ends? That's okay. it. Yeah. So, and I thought that was, I thought that was a really neat scene to, like, read. Um, because, like, they also, like, one part, like, Zoya smells something, I remember. And then, like, 
n- somebody doesn't, and Zoya then uses her squalor powers just a little bit, just yeah, to well, like let the. Well, it's it's also as they go. It's it's when they go up in flames that Zoya tries to send a blast, but the accelerant is too strong and it doesn't work. And they notice that. They say that the accelerant on Aerie was only on the very bottom. Yes, that's only why on the him, and that's yeah. why she had no idea what's going on. Yeah. Now. So, um, and I believe that. I think so. Um, yeah, I mean. I don't think Aerie, like. Um, it all makes sense, especially yeah. when you say, you know, the top guard serve the queen and all that stuff. So Exactly. And see, here we go. Chapter nine. So Zoya. Of course I get Zoya. <laughs> Duh. Um, okay, so Zoya is um, staying present while um, Nikolai is getting healed because he has. We just heard he was get he got badly burned trying to save Ari. Thank goodness for healers. I know. <laughs> exactly. Um, thank goodness. Um, and it's actually really sweet. This is a moment where I was like saying, like, I love this ship. I want more of this ship. Mm-hmm. And here is this quote. Okay. Nikolai clung to her hand as the healer stripped the ruined flesh from his arm. Only then could it be replaced with healthy skin. It seemed to take hours. First one arm, then the other. Whenever Zoya left the king's side to fetch a cool cloth for his head, to turn up the lantern so that the healer had better light, Nikolai would open his eyes and mutter, where is my general? End quote. I love that. Like, that is just so, just so sweet. Oh. Mm, want to happen. Okay. So. <laughs> Make it happen. Later um, in Zoya's room, everybody, it seems to be where everybody's congregated. Mm-hmm. Um, and. Nikolai then comes in, and he's obviously been healed, and he's he's good. But they've got a lot going on, obviously, because they just had their first battle with Fjorda. They come back home, and his soon-to-be bride and her soldiers all go up in flames. So I'm guessing all the soldiers are dead, and Ares is the only one alive Those still. 10, yeah. Yeah. So um, Nikolai asks Tolia and Tamar, please explain to me, like, what what happened? Can you put this together? And as you said, it was clear Queen Makai is sending a message. And also her she was trying to attempt to clean up possibly the assassination that didn't go right in, in, right, yeah. in King of Scars. Makes yeah. sense. Yeah, to actually get her sister dead. Right. Because she's supposed to be. Because that then is going to... Yeah. yeah, one more shot. Yeah, exactly. So Princess Eri was the only one who survived. And... Nikolai is like, well, I mean, having this happen brings a new problem because now they've got all these dead soldiers in their in their palace. Right. And he's like, well, Ares the only one that can, if she decides to tell the truth, Ares is going to be the only one that can say, hey, we didn't kill them. It wasn't us that killed all these right. people. So, um, it's she's just- got to be the witness. Exactly. Um, and we don't know much about Ares. Mm-mm. Really, we still don't know a lot. We read about her in King King of Scars, but that was as a different person. I mean, we got to know her, but we haven't really understood her position where she is now because it's totally different. She's now like, I mean, I think she did in some way feel like she was trapped. I don't think she knew what to do um, where she was because, I mean, they weren't allowing her to leave, obviously. they Like, I mean, they put this marriage together because they're trying to put some stuff together but i think also she i think she knew that her sister's like wicked and there's some stuff going on in her country that she probably doesn't agree with anyways that's all hypothetical to be honest (laughs) um well but we'll see so it's discussed that how the grisha in the shuhan are feared and actually are used as weapons um, unlike how in Fjorda, we know they just exterminate them. And I've got this next quote because it's a really good definition of the Kergud. So here's the quote. The Kergud were Shuhan's deadliest soldiers, though the government had never acknowledged them in any official way. They were tailored by Grisha under the influence of Parem. Their senses heightened, their bones reinforced and altered. Some could even fly. Zoya shivered, remembering being yanked off her feet, the grip of the Kergood soldier's arm around her like steel bands, end quote. So just so we like, I mean, it's important to understand in this universe how the Grisha are different in every country right. and the way they're like some, like Ravka really is the only place that they're respected. But 
it's discussed how the Darkling taking... I thought this was interesting because they say how, like, okay, so Ravka, the Darkling, created, like, the second army. But he also, like, I mean, got them, like, Grisha were taken away as children. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it this way, taken away from their families. Mm-hmm. Um, and pretty much to forget about them, like, not even have any connection to their family again, pay off the families. But, I mean, even though they have a great life, that still is... It's still, like, I mean, it still is another way of, like, controlling the Grisha and making their own army. It is, but if we also go back and think about Alina only came into her own power after she let go of Mal, um, there's that kind of aspect of it, too. You know, if you are still a part of something else, you're not going to pour everything into it. So there, I can... It's just not as free as, like, you know, like, as as it could be. You know, I mean, like, I think I... It could it could be better. It right. could be like, you know, well, we're going to take your Grisha children. You can still talk to them, and <laughs> we'll pay you because thank you. But you can still have communication with them. Um, anyways, so it's just brought up because, I mean, it's interesting because the Grisha still, if you think about it, even in Ravka, are being used as a weapon because they're being used in specifically right. being trained for their second army. Yeah, they are the army. Exactly. So I don't think we have anywhere that we really specifically know of in the universe yet where Grisha are completely free just to live their lives with being out. Like, I mean, with people knowing and not having to take them or kill them or put them in an army. Cause we don't know enough about Novia no. Zem or the wandering owl yet. We know a little, but not enough. Yeah. I mean, we know about like Jesper, like Jesper's mom, but it still had to be but like. They, was it? Was it? Like it, it, super it was still secret? like it was still like. Oh yeah, that's why he. Well, they didn't want it. It was like almost like what we didn't get enough information there. Uh, I think that's what okay. it was because that was where the Zawa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it was kind of looked at almost as a curse. Um, but it's just interesting. Yeah. Um, just to think about this, so. Um, anyways, then we have, like, a little interlude, and Zoya and Nikolai now are on, like, a little walk, and, um, they are actually, here here it is, peeps. Okay, I'm gonna give you the quote first. He and Zoya had built this prison carefully. Yes, that's right, guys. We're talking about the Darklings prison. Okay. (laughs) Leaving only the skeleton of the Avery. Its walls were now made entirely of glass, letting light in throughout the day. At night, sun soldiers, heirs to Alina Starkov's power, many of whom had fought against the Darkling on the fold, kept the light alive. They had all been sworn to secrecy, and Zoya hoped that vow would hold. The Darkling had emerged into this new life without his power, without his powers, or so it seemed. They were taking no chances. End quote. So interesting. Like, they've got him in this, like, homemade, like, prison, specifically uh-huh. for the Darkling. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was neat that they've got, like, sun soldiers, which were, like, we haven't heard about them for a long time. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> like, I mean, and I, the last we heard of them, like, seriously, was, like, in the trilogy, right? Like, in from my thinking, the way I pictured the sun soldiers wasn't really as soldiers. It's more like it kind of sporadically was people that got that light power. Right, yeah. So, anyways, they've got these special sun soldiers that I guess are keeping this light burning to keep the darkling in there and not tell anybody. So I guess it's like a day and night job. You know, they probably clock in and clock out, go home. (laughs) Don't tell their family (laughs) that, Hey, the darkling or somebody. Um, does that sound right? Am I, am I understanding that correctly? Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I do check because I have no clue. I (laughs) like when I'm asking that, I seriously am asking Terry because like I can be crazy and like make up my own stuff. So I do have it to happens. check with my best friend to be like, okay, did I get that? Because hell, there's parts of this book where she's read it and I'm like, oh my God, I didn't get, now I get it. <laughs> and I've read the book and I've been obsessed with this world before it, she even read it. It happens. But I know. That's why she's my best friend. She helps me understand the world. <laughs> um, there's okay. a song in there somewhere. There is. Mm. Okay. So, okay. This is another quote, but this is 
what we have all been waiting for, okay? We have to remember the last book ended with the Darkland pretty much saying, what up, fam? I'm back. <laughs> Woo! And that was all we got. Yeah. And then we had to wait years uh-huh. for this book to come out. And we are now in chapter nine and have not heard a single peep about, really, the Darkling. Mm-hmm. We've heard a little bit of, like, assumptions, but no clue what's going on. So finally, here we are. When the door opened, their prisoner rose from where he'd been sitting on the floor, moving with a kind of grace Yuri Vedenin had never possessed. Yuri, a young monk who had preached the gospel of the starless saint, had led the cult dedicated to worship of the Darkling. They believed the Starless One had been martyred on the fold and that he would return. And to Zoya's great surprise, Yuri and the rest of the Adel- um, zealots clad in black and chanting for a dead dictator had been right. The Darkling had been resurrected. His power had poured into Yuri's own body. And now, now Zoya wasn't sure who or what this man was. His face was narrow, his pale skin smooth, his eyes gray beneath dark brows. His long black hair almost brushed his collarbones. He wore dark trousers and nothing else. His chest and feet bare, vain as always, end quote. So, Yuri's body, Mm -hmm. obviously, but standing in a stance that Yuri never would stand in. Um, big pointer there though is the the gray eyes that's always mentioned. Yep. He's got these gray eyes. Um and I love the word trousers for some reason. <laughs> he's wearing dark trousers. Trousers. <laughs> I feel like he's getting fitted for something. Oh. I don't know. Um okay, so Zoya's right. Like, I mean, in this small little part where it's like Zoya wasn't sure who or what this was. We we really don't. We I mean, we know it's the Darkling's voice came out and like, but still What a weird conundrum. Oh, yeah. Okay, so the Darkling is there. I mean, it's it's just in somebody else's body, Mm -hmm. um, in Yuri's body. And Darkling tells them how he knew um, they were going to come and visit and have tea, I guess. So he was was just anticipating them coming. (laughs) And he says he knows why and that they need something. He knows that this blight is spreading. Um, So the Darkling says that looking back... His biggest mistake was Sturmund. That, like, I mean, he, like, I guess in his history of everything falling to falling together, suppose or put being put together, his biggest mistake and the reason his whole plan didn't come together was because him meeting Nikolai Sturmund. Yeah, which I just find that very. I don't know. I I don't like really totally. I get it, but like, yeah. I remember, because he interrupted the whole sea whip thing. I know this whip. whip, whip. Yep. But so then, so this is where I come in because I agree with Z- Zoya. Gets pissed off, and she she rightfully so. She's like, okay, so Sturmon is what you think was the biggest mis- like thing. Um, don't forget about manipulate like. You manipulated a young girl's powers, um, destroying a, a city of innocent people, decimating the Grisha, blinding your own <laughs> mother. Um, just being a general ill person to be yeah. around. And just so none of those were, um, I love how she, because she phrases it, none of those were time for self examination. <laughs> and like I thought about that. That cause... sounds like something Lee would say, like, on her own. You know right. what I mean? Like, that sounds like Lee language. <laughs> yeah. Because I definitely can... The Darkling is absolutely a character I see that would be... Spend time in the self-help section. You know, uh, do, yeah. like, self-examination all uh-huh. the way. Um, no. Not at all. Like, so I just think that's funny, like, that she phrased it that way because um, I love those books. <laughs> Oh yeah, I love filling that's out those great, journals. That's like, like one of the best sections in the bookstore is the self help section. Oh my god, some of those journals that I've talked about before, <gasps> we should fill it out as the Darkling sometime <laughs> and pretend like what would the Darkling say? Like if he filled out like um all about me, <laughs> which is like I love it. I filled it out once finally. Um, it's just oh my god, that'd be really funny. It'd be really cool, but you'd have to read it. You'd have to read everything. Um, well, we will, but. Anyways, 
funny thought. I just was imagining the Darkling seeking self-help and, you know, calling his insurance. The Darkling in therapy. Yeah, just finding out where. (laughs) Sitting on the couch talking about. (laughs) Like what his copay was, um, you know. Talking about all the horrible things his parents did to him to make him the way that he is. Exactly. Yep. What did Bogra do that was so Mm -hmm. bad? We don't know. See, I want to know about the father. Yeah. We only know about Bagra. Mm-hmm. And actually, we do have a, we have the story of the demon in the wood only talks about Bagra. Yeah. I'm, I, but I've only read that once. So I'm sorry, readers, if I'm wrong and they mention something about a dad. Sorry, I haven't read in a while, but um, maybe they do. Um, anyways, okay. So that is going to bring us to our scene, which is actually going to end out this chapter. But it's a very important scene because obviously it's got the darkling in it. Have patience. I am going to be trying to play two different characters, and I'm going to try to be doing two different voices for them. Yeah, I practiced a little bit. Um, I'm going to be playing Nikolai and Zoya, and (laughs) Terry is going to be playing the Darkling. So this is um, pretty much just where that ends. It's them coming together, figuring out what to do, and it ends up this chapter... And before we start, a very special thank you for the background music created by Kendra Dantes in year 26. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so you got it all pulled up? Yes. Okay, so hold on. I got to kind of remember. What voices do I? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna so mess this up, but this will be funny. So, as long as it's entertaining. It will be. I, I've tried to mark it off where, like, this is Zoya, this is Nikolai, but they're all still the same color. So why did I? But... See, I get confused. Just be, have fun. God bless. Yeah, exactly. The power of Christ compels you. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Jesus, take the wheel. <laughs> so fun. So fun. So fun. Okay, so we're going to actually start this now. So, Because um, <laughs> if we don't, we'll be here all night. Okay, so here we go. Curtain up. Why are we here? Being around him makes me want to break things. Let's take him to the fold and kill him. Maybe that will set things right. It won't work, said the Darkling. The demon lives on in your king. You will have to kill him too. Don't give her ideas, said Nikolai. The only way to heal the rupture in the fold is to finish what you started and perform the Obis Baya. Pause. I'm so sorry. What is wrong with my background music? <laughs> like we don't check these things. Like we, I know. Like we I don't know. Check these I'm just telling beforehand. my listeners to please be bear with me for a second while I figure. Well, okay. Well, you know what? We'll just <laughs> sing the background music in your head while you listen to us. Okay. Yeah. I, I tried. I don't know what happened, but anyways. It's I. Yeah, it'll be okay. We'll get through it. So, okay, so. Tolia made the same suggestion, the ritual of the burning thorn. They had been lured into attempting it by Elisaveta, who had only wished to use the opportunity to kill Nikolai and resurrect the Darkling. If they wanted to attempt it again, this would be the time when the Darkling was still powerless and the Fjordans were licking their wounds. But the risk was simply too great. And even if they were willing to take it, they didn't have the means. We have no thorn wood, said Zoya. It crumbled to ash when the saints died and the boundaries of the fold fell. But we might acquire one, said the Darkling. I see. From who? Monks. She threw up her hands. Why is it always monks? There was fruit taken from the thorn wood when it was still young. Its seeds were preserved by the Order of St. Felix. And where are they? Now the Darkling looked less certain. I don't know exactly. I've never had need of them, but I can tell you how to find them. I smell a bargain in the works, Nikolai said, rubbing his hands together. What will this knowledge cost us? The Darkling's eyes glittered, gray quartz beneath a false sun. Bring me Alina Starkov 
and I'll tell you what you need to know. All the humor left Nikolai's face. What do you want with Alina? A chance to apologize, a chance to see what became of the girl who drove a knife into my heart. Zoya shook her head. I don't believe a word that leaves your mouth. The Darkling shrugged. I might not either, but you know my terms. And if we don't agree to them, she asked. Then the fold will keep expanding and swallow the world. The young king will fall and I will sing myself to sleep in my prison cell. Zoya stood. I don't like any of this. He's up to something. And even if we find the monastery and the seeds, what would we do with them? We would need an extraordinary powerful fabricator to bring forth the thornwood the way that Elisaveta did. The Darkling smiled. Does this mean you have not mastered all Jura set out to teach you? Zoya felt the dam containing her rage give way. She lunged towards the Darkling as Nikolai seized her arms to hold her back. You do not speak his name. Say his name again and I'll cut the tongue from your mouth and wear it as a brooch. Don't, Nikolai said, his grip strong, his voice low. He's not worth your anger. The Darkling watched her as he had when she was a pupil, as if there was something only he could see inside her, as if it amused him. They all die, Zoya. They all will. Everyone you love. Is that right? said Nikolai. How tragic. Can you be still, Zoya? Zoya shook Nikolai off. For now. How she struggles, the Darkling said, his voice thick with mirth. Like an insect pinned by her own power. Poetic, said Nikolai. You have something in your beard. To Zoya's confusion, the Darkling raised his hand to his smooth chin, then dropped it as if he'd been burned. His gaze lit with something very like hate. Now it was Nikolai who was smiling. That's what I thought, said the king. Your Vedidin is still there, somewhere inside you. Is that why your powers haven't returned? The Darkling watched the king with narrowed eyes. Such a clever fellow. That's why you want us to raise the Thornwood and perform the Obis Baya. You could care less what damage the Fold does. You want to purge yourself of Yuri and become host to my demon. You want a way back to your power. I've told you what I want. Bring me Alina Starkov. That is the bargain. No, said Zoya. The Darkling turned his back on them and looked out over the lights glittering in the city spread below. Then I can live as a weakling and you can watch the world die. End scene. No music. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I know. Oh, well. But, hey, I didn't actually mess up the character well, voices. there you go. I finally did it. So that was the end. Um, that was a, I just felt like that was a very important scene because, one, oh, my God, mm -hmm. I've been wanting to hear from Alina forever since we left her back in Ruin <laughs> and Rising. So, like, she's mentioned, and the Darkling wants to see her. Oh, my God! I know. Ah! I know you start getting excited at this point, but you don't want to get excited because you don't want to get let down. Yeah. But you're like, maybe Alina is coming, but maybe she's not. And then it just ends and you're like, okay. And you try to figure, like, just try to figure out, like, what is he up to? Yep. What is the Darkling up to? It's such a great part, though. Like, it, I just, I loved it because I felt like, you know, once we finished King of Scars, all we wanted was more of the Darkling. Mm -hmm. I never, one, when you, started reading King of Scars, did you ever expect to hear from the Darkling again? Because I didn't. No. I was very, like, I mean, that, like, I remember literally listening to the very end of that book um, on on audio, and I was driving the car. <laughs> I was driving. And I, like, was had to, like, rewind. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> what happened at the, like, the Darkling? And, like, I was, like, so, uh, I know. Everybody's out there. Okay. So... It's that special time for Grisha Cast News. news! <laughs> Woohoo! So let's now go live to our Grisha in the field, Alex. Hi. Hello, hello. Hello. <laughs> How, How are you guys? Uh, 
We are so good. How are you? I am fabulous. Woohoo! This has been crazy. Yeah, there was a lot of news last week. Thanks for all that. Absolutely. (laughs) Crazy. So, we got anything going on this week? Absolutely nothing. (laughs) Well, hey, it's okay because we got a lot last week. So, that was really cool and exciting. I learned a lot from you. I didn't know we had other merch. That was really cool. So Mm -hmm. That was in her newsletter. That was fun. Did you say you have a pair of those socks, though? Mm Mm-hmm. Okay, so what socks are these? Like They are red socks for Six of Crows, and they have little logos for each of the characters. So there's a little bomb, there's a crow, there's a knife, there's a heart. Okay, these have been around for a while, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm just making sure. Okay, yeah, I thought... Yeah. I remember seeing those at, like, one of the book signings that they had them at, like, the store you could buy them at if you wanted them. Okay, cool. And well, on the bottom of the foot, one foot says no mourners, the other says no funerals. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, well. <laughs> I love it. I need new socks, apparently. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, and we're going to be coming out with some cool merch, too, so that'll be neat. <laughs> we'll be able to have shirts and things. <laughs> I'm excited about that. So, well, absolutely. Well, thanks, Alex. Our Grisha in the field. You just hang out in that field, and hopefully, some more news will fly at you. <laughs> hopefully, it doesn't hit me. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't worry. I'm a squalor, so I got you. So there we go. <laughs> I, I used my powers. <laughs> and, or you could burn it away. You're an inferni, right? Are you? Not- I'm a durist. A durist. Okay. Well. Then yeah, I'll just stick with them. I'll, I'll, I'll let it fly away. I'll create some kind of tornado. <laughs> so, well, that's you, been productive. You, <laughs> well, have a great week, <laughs> and we will see you next week. See ya. Bye. Bye. Alex. <laughs> uh, well, thanks, Alex, for that news <laughs> or I, lack of. Yeah, I know. But <laughs> last week we got lost. Yes. So I mean, we can't expect. Can't that. be picky. No. Um, at this time, we want to, one, thank all of our Fable listeners and also let you guys grab it. If you'd like to be a part of a book club, even if you don't want to be a part of the Shadow and Bone book club, go check out this app. It's, it's really a free app, y'all. It is. And we are doing the Shadow and Bone series. We're hosting. Yeah. And we're discussing things that we have that are not on this show. So we're doing like content. We're pretty much like just going through like. You, just go check it out. Go check out Fable. <laughs> Do it. It's great. Um, I think it's going to get bigger and bigger oh, and yeah. bigger. Yeah. Um, and they uh, have some other cool things on there too. But I mean, of course, we're the coolest thing. Yeah. But it's a it's a cool app. Well, there are some really actual famous people on there too. So <laughs> there. Um, oh, excuse me. But we are. Excuse me. Here we is. <laughs> they still wanted us to do it. Um, so <laughs> I would like to do a special shout out to our friend on Instagram, Terry Dowell 87 who messaged me and said she just found us. Thank you so much. And you know what? I'm so glad you found us. And oh my gosh, if you're listening to the beginning, just keep listening. It gets better. <laughs> I promise <laughs> you. We um very we are we, if you wanted an introduction of how a podcast starts without having any clue how to do a podcast, Listen to our podcast because we will take you on that journey. And look where we are now. And look at us now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anyways, um, just want to make sure. Thank you to them. Um, and please make sure to go to Apple Podcast and rate us. Mm-hmm. Although, rate us. I don't know how much I'm going to be reading all the comments because some of them people out there we know. Um. Let's all support one another. Love one another. If you don't have something nice to say, don't say nothing at all. If you don't like our podcast, that's fine. <laughs> right? There's plenty of them. Okay. Um, sorry, you know, I just got ticked off that other people like other Grishaverse <laughs> podcasts had some pretty hateful stuff written. So that's not cool. So I wanted to do this last week, but I spoke too much. Me? Too much? What? I know. Earlier today, so I wanted to do a Fear to Mary Kill specifically for Terry. And Anyways, luckily today, I um, I actually put it on our Instagram, and luckily, 
she hasn't seen it, so she doesn't know, but I got some of your <laughs> answers. I've been in my overworld. And I really designed this specifically for her. So, Terry, Feared and Mary Kill, Hannah, Nina, and Ben Barnes. Okay. So, do you want me to give what others answered, or do you need some time to think first? Or oh, I got you... it. Okay. Oh, well, I got okay, it. Girl. Well, give us what you got. <laughs> what you got? Uh, I'm going to marry Hannah. Um, for reasons I'm not going to say. <laughs> um, why? Cause spoiler alert. So didn't we already do that though? Oh, well, I better, I'm not gonna I'm, do it again. I might as well be quiet. God, because yeah, I mean I'm don't no me do it again. I know. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it was me that did it. You don't do it. No, I did. <laughs> I got in on that combo, girl. So I mean. All right. So no spoilers. I'd marry Hannah. Um, and I would kill Ben Barnes. Sorry wow. about it. Sorry about it. I mean. That is so unexpected. I knew this was going to be the hard one for you. I actually watched his show, Gold Digger, which I highly suggest. He's great in it. Really? Uh, yeah. Um, it's on okay. Acorn. And I would, of course, fear to Nina. Like, was there ever any doubt? See, I figured there, there's going to be a hard toss-up between... I knew Hannah was going to be easy, but I thought Nina and Ben Barnes was going to be hard for you. Huh. No? Well, okay. So <laughs> our Alex, our Grisha, who's still in the field. <laughs> Somewhere out there. Yep. Just hang on. <laughs> um, Alex said that the, Alex would kill Ben, marry Hannah, and Fjord and Nina. Duh. Then we've got Rebecca Wolvers, she would marry Hannah, fear to Nina, and kill Ben. See? <laughs> <laughs> and then into the fold said they would marry Ben, fear to Nina, and kill Hannah. No. <laughs> and then this lovely girl named Lee on Instagram, um, who is um, Jeannie and Lulu's Kitchen, would kill Hannah. Fjordan, Nina, and Mary Ben. There's a lot of Nina Fjordan going on. I know. Nina yeah. is feeling it. Mm -hmm. I hope she's go -ger. <laughs> So. Alrighty. Yeah. So, anyways, thank you guys for tuning in. Next week, we will be covering, again, two chapters, just mm -hmm. the way these are lining up page-wise. We're going to be doing um, chapters 10 and 11. Um, please do not forget, if you have any questions, for Aiden Thomas, send those in. Um, we've got some more interviews coming later on, but we're going to just stick to this one right now. But please send some questions if you have any. And if you haven't had time and you want, like, you want something to read and you want something easy and, like, that's groundbreaking, but also an easy read, check out Cemetery Boys. I promise. Um, I'm reading the other book, which is really good. Um, it's his newest book, and um, it's kind of a, about Peter Pan, but in different. I haven't finished it yet, so can't tell you all about it. But anyways, thanks all. We love you. <laughs> love you all. And we'll, we'll see you all next week. Bye. Bye. Like, we're at the end of the hour, so my voice is a little husky. It was. No, no mourners. mourners. No funerals. This has been GrishaCast. Connect with us on the web at GrishaCast.com. Send an email to info at GrishaCast.com. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Patreon at GrishaCast. Thank you to Kendra Dantes in Year 26 for the amazing background music. Our staff, Chris, Alex, Sid, Michelle, and Amber. 